Okay, so we're going to transition into a series of lessons using a different microcontroller from the one we've been using so far. So up till now, we've done most of our projects on a board that looks like this called the Arduino Uno um, with this Atmega328 processor on it. Uh, we're going to do some projects now using the ESP32, which um, has a different microcontroller on it and is has a lot more um, memory RAM also has some uh, wireless capabilities. We'll take a look at those and we'll be doing um, some projects with this. Um, and to get started, I just want to kind of talk about like why you might use this board over this one. And then also just to understand that even while we're going switching from this one to this one, there's kind of thousands of options out there. So even just in the simulator walkway that we use, you can see they have, um, if you look at this list right here, there's maybe 20 or so. 30 maybe boards on here. If we go to platform IO um, and we make a new project here, there's going to be a, probably hundreds of options for different boards. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, let's pull this up. Yeah, so it looks like they have 1,500 different boards on here. And a lot of these are ones that have the same processor, different variations with the same processor. But a lot of these have their own. And you'll see that even a lot of these have ESP32s on them. Um, these options in here and so um, there's lots of different kinds of boards different kinds of microcontrollers and um, this is one that's pretty popular that we're going to look at today and we'll kind of look at why we might use this versus the Arduino and stuff like that uh, before we do that though actually yeah and so let's do a little comparison here and so um, the processor on the Arduino this thing's probably about maybe 20 years old at this point, I'm not sure exactly, maybe more than that. And this one right here, um, this this is actually not just a processor. This is like a kind of a module that contains the processor and then some other things like in, in this board right here, you have like a crystal here um, that provides timing for the chip. There's kind of some other features here built in as well that allow us to use that chip. Um, such as like a, uh, yeah, well, so anyway, there's those features built in. This one here has in this little package all those features combined. And the benefit of that is that you can, um, instead of having to build out, if you're designing a new circuit board, you don't have to get like your crystal figured out and all these other things. It's all built in. And then this one too also has an antenna built into it. And it's got um, FCC approval. So um, if you were making a, a product that had wireless capabilities, you would have to get the, that Wi-Fi product or that Bluetooth product approved by the FCC before you could distribute it. Um, and here you have that approval already done, at least for this part. There's other types of approval you need to get if you're going to manufacture something, but at least you have that part of it done if you use one of those modules. And so that's another benefit there. Um, but coming down to comparison, um, a couple things. First of all, this processor here um, has uses ARM, um, so it's got an ARM processor inside, whereas this one has an Extensa processor inside. It's got two processors instead of just one. Um, and some of the other key features here is that we have a whole lot more uh, RAM, or sorry, flash. And so um, here we have 32 kilobytes of flash, and here we have four megabytes. And so this is maybe about a hundred times as much, a little more than a hundred times as much. And there's two reasons for that. One reason is when you're using Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, the uh, um, the size of the code that you have to put on the device is a little, is a lot bigger, and so you need that extra space. But additionally, let's say you were going to build a device that could you could update remotely using um, uh, what kind of setup you have with your server and everything. You can send firmware to the device over the internet over bluetooth and there's you can basically divide this memory up so that you can have basically two slots of memory for each of the partitions and then you can update to one um, so you can save that into there and then like kind of switch the other one and so having that extra memory allows that additionally we have um, 520 kilobytes of ram compared to the two kilobytes on the um the Uno that we've been using, and so we were doing a Space Invaders game. We ran into some trouble with memory with that two kilobytes. Um, you can see here we've got 260 times as much memory here, so that wouldn't be an issue in that case. 
a lot faster clock speed, which means it can do faster processing. Kind of an important thing here is that the um, the volt it runs at 3.3 volts instead of 5 volts, which means that when we're connecting to these pins, they cannot. Uh, if you were to connect 5 volts, then you could damage them. And so one thing we have to be careful with this board is we don't want to connect this VN accidentally to any of these other pins because you will uh, do some damage to the board. Um, but those are the key things. Some other features, again, it has um, the Wi-Fi and the Bluetooth. It's got some touch sensors, which are kind of fun. We'll mess around with those a little bit. And additionally, that's not on here, is it has um, uh, a couple of things. It's got I2S, which is for um, a type of communication used for sound. And then it's also, or audio, I guess. And it's also got um, a digital analog converter, which is pretty fun as well. And we'll take a look at that, too. Okay, so those are just kind of some of the capabilities. And then one of the key differences here that we mentioned is that we have a different kind of processor in here. And um, when, if you are using a board that's based on an ARM processor, you're basically licensing that technology um, so that you can build your board on it. Um, and this is a, essentially different technology that you're using. And so from our kind of surface level use of this, it's not going to matter. But um, if we look at what happens when we run our code, um, Arduino takes that C code right here and it turns it to assembly, which is in these kind of like instructions here. And then later it's going to turn that into uh, binary. And so you can see for extensa versus ARM, the process of running this code where we're just going to print this hello world statement you can see that it looks a little bit different based on the number of instructions that it generates as well as um, as well as the um check that here the um the actual instructions right we have different instructions for extensa than we do for arm um and this is just going on in the background and this is one of the reasons why working with these things can get really complicated because if I have something that runs on an ARM platform and I run on an extensive platform, I have to install a whole bunch of tools in order to generate the code for this platform if I've been working with this one. And that's one of the reasons why using Arduino is so beneficial because it allows us to basically jump from one to the other without having to um, spend hours installing and, and troubleshooting the tool chain in order to compile that code for the different board. And so I'll show you. Um, and so the Arduino kind of ecosystem lets me run this code here, this exact same code with no modifications on my uh, dev, like my ESP32 dev board or my Arduino Uno. All I would do, you know, I just press the little arrow, it runs it and it works. Um, and so this is a very useful kind of, um, this is why this tool is so popular because essentially it's saving us hours of time, gets us up and running right away, and we don't have to worry about it. Um, and so what we're going to do now is we're going to look at if we want to run ESP32 on here, what we need to do. And so in this, in the um, older version of the IDE, it's not installed automatically. Maybe this one it is, but if you want to run code on the ESP32, what we need to do is um, there's this kind of getting started here. Talks about the different boards. Talks about Arduino. Um, there's a first step section here. This is kind of their main kind of page on how to use this stuff. But if we look at the first steps, uh, how to install. So this is a guide for installing it. Basically, there's a link here that downloads all the board information for Arduino. We want to copy that and we want to paste it. If we go to um, preferences here. And then here we have additional board managers URLs. We've got this one here. There's a comma. I've got another one. And then you can say add that one. So I'm just going to do a comma. And you could paste it in like that. Okay. Then you press OK. And then I'll be on there. Um, once that's done, if you look over here in the boards manager, you'll see them here. And then you want to find the one for. Um, let's see, we want ESP32 by Espressive Systems, and then we're going to press, there should be um, 
an install button there for you if it doesn't pop up. It looks like this is just taking a bunch of space here. Uh, if it's not working there, you can also go to um, tools. No. Here we go. Boards manager here. Nope, it doesn't work. Okay. Um, ESP32, you search it here. This is the one you want to install. Mine's installed. Uh, don't want to uninstall it. And then if it's, it got this weird thing where it's like getting cut off. So I don't know if it'll be like that for you, but if it is like this, you might close out and come back in and see if that fixes it. Um, also can find it by searching espresso. And then once you've done this, you add, it's as simple as selecting the board you want. And so we're going to be using the ESP32 dev kit v1 here. Okay. Now, if we want to do this in platform IO, we're just going to click new project. We're going to give it a name. Um, and then we're going to select our board, which is the ESP32. One specifically, we're using that dev kit, right? So it's going to, let's do it. There you go. This guy right here. Okay. And we'll click finish. The first time we do this, it's going to take a long time because um, it's downloading all the stuff in the background, all that kind of thing. Later times, it will go a little bit faster. So this was a more recent attempt. So I've done it before, and then you can see it got faster than 10. And now I've got it up and running. We can click here. This is our main function, and we run our code. Everything else just the same. We do want to set the um, – we'll do some tweaks here, uh, but otherwise we'll be in pretty good shape to run our code. Okay, so we're going to just do a basic kind of getting started example here where we make it blink, an LED. Now, just a note that the ones, the boards that we're using, um, the, the do it dev kit that I've been ex referencing um, has a different pinout than the one that you see here. And so we'll try to make sure we're aware of what's going on. But basically for this, all we're going to do is we're going to add an LED and a resistor. An LED. Oops. Let's add ourselves a resistor. And we're going to make this one be, um, we'll go 330. Okay. We're going to flip this guy. Okay. And we're going to connect it to pin 23, which is actually the last one. On the uh, on this side of the board. So here we have a ground next to it. We don't actually have that on our board. The ground is down here, and there's also a ground over on this side here. We're going to use this other ground there, but you need to find ground and connect it. And then we're just going to do a basic blink. So we're going to say um, pin mode twenty three. And then we'll select output, and then we're going to do a digital write. Three, and we'll set it to high. And set it to low. No, ourselves some delays. So we'll put this one there. Let's write that. Let's make them be 500. And then we'll roll. Okay, now in this um, simulation here, it takes a while. But we'll go ahead and copy this code as well. And you'll see here the serial monitor is a little bit higher speed. And yep, there we go. We have our LED blinking. We got our hello world statement there. And then here in platform IO, we'll do the same thing. We're going to take this, got to leave our include statement up there. There it is right here. Set it as output, write it to high, write it to low. And then um, from here, if you want to see it on the serial monitor, we do need to make a change here to change the speed. So here we're going to go ahead and say monitor speed. And we're going to set that to 115200. And that will allow us to go a little bit faster here. 
and use this faster baud rate. And we can add a print statement here to serial dot print ln hello run it. Okay. Okay, so we're gonna click the arrow to run perform our upload here. And so we've got all kinds of stuff here. You'll notice that some things are different here from the uh, when you're running the Arduino board. And this is just due to it being a different board. And so it needs to do some different things in the background to make it work. And we've got a built, it's connecting, and it runs it. Now we're writing it. And we're all done. So we click on our serial monitor button. And now we see our print statement there. And you should see it blinking if you got it connected on the pin 23 there with your LED. Okay, that's a good start here. Up next, we'll start to look at kind of some working with the wireless. Um, and then later, we'll also take some time to look at the um, the touch pins as well as the um, the DAC, the digital analog converter.